Okay, welcome back everyone. We see that all panelists have now uh, joined for our um, second um, round table of uh, today. That is on about, about um, uh, meeting the challenges of our post-industrial cities. So we now move on a little bit from education to what our European university can mean for the cities in which we are situated. And this second round table will be led by Ms. Samira Abadi, uh, one of the program managers from uh, Unique. And I would like to hand the floor over to you, Samira. Yes, uh, thank you, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, as Peter uh, said, I'm one of the program manager of Unique, together with my colleague, uh, Mario Halle. I'm happy uh, to lead the session. Uh, it's time for the cities. Um, so uh, about how uh, what we do for our cities and how we can impact them positively uh, with our universities. For this session, we invited the rectors of the universities that have a leading role in our city labs and thus in our impact uh, on our cities. I will uh, briefly, uh, uh, very briefly introduce them to save uh, some space for, uh, for a good interaction. Uh, we have Professor Dr. Pierre Wolper, from the University of Liège, the rector. We have vice rector of University of Oulu, Dr. Arto Maninen. I hope I pronounce it well. Uh, Professor Dr. Alex Rayon Jerez. He is a vice rector of the University of Deusto in, uh, in Bilbao. And uh, our own uh, Professor Dr. Ed Brinksma, the president of uh, Erasmus University Rotterdam is also joining us in this co conversation. Um, I will start with a general question and I would like to give uh, to each rector the floor to answer that. After that, I will have some specific questions uh, focused on the expertise and the specialty of the universities and their vision. And uh, the first question is uh, actually related to who we are as a, as a university and why we chose to, to be uh, that university. Unique is the European University of Post-Industrial Cities. Um, why do you think it's important to have a university of post-industrial cities? I would like to start with uh, Professor Wolper. Yes, well, greetings to all. Um, why well, I think it's important to have a university of post-industrial cities is simply because well, first we are a post-industrial city. I mean, the history of Liège is very linked to industry. It started here in the early 19th century, and at the end of the 19th century, we were one of the major industrial centers in the world. And things have changed a lot since then. And so being in the university with other universities of cities who have a similar history, I think is really important for us of sharing this experience and finding the best paths to really contribute to the cities we are in and to the education of the students we now have. Another point is that, you know, Liège was an internationally very attractive university, and well-known worldwide. We still are, but I think we don't have quite the same, you know, international uh, attraction as we had when uh, Liège was a major industrial centre. And I think it's important to restore this, and being in Munich is, for me, really a help in doing this. Thank you, and thank you for sharing some of the Liège history uh, as well. Uh, can I give the word to Dr. Arto Maninen? Thank you. Yeah, we have the same thing in Oulu, in Finland, and in, in Liège, that we really are a post-industrial city, and there has been a big transformation on ICT sector at Oulu, and there was a, there was big layoffs for, of Nokia and Broadcom back in 2014. In two weeks, we lost uh, 3,400 highly educated jobs, so it was a big, big hit during the summertime. Um, University of Oulu has had a role on, on recovery of, of the city, of course, not as an only actor, but as part of, part of the development of the region and city on activities. Uh, UNIC is important for us in Oulu and the University of Oulu because we, we need to benchmark together what has happened and how the cities have recovered. We have to learn about lessons or lessons learned together. And of course, the co-development that uh, we are building together the future of post-industrial cities. Thank you. 
Thank you, uh, Arto. Uh, Ed, can I give you uh, the floor for uh, for the answer from the Rotterdam perspective? Yes, thank you very much, um, and, and nice to see my colleagues here. Um, I would tend to, of course, I can repeat for Rotterdam in, in its own version what has been said for Aulu and, and, and Liège, but perhaps I'd like to take a slightly different angle. Uh, one of my favorite books is the book Scale by Jeffrey West, which I could uh, recommend to anyone. And, and one of the chapters actually looks at cities as organisms. And um, you can look at cities as organisms, and they happen to have, in the entities we have in civilizations, the highest metabolism. And uh, I think among cities, post-industrial cities, again, uh, top that. They go to huge transitions, and it means that they are, on the one hand, I'd like to refer to the previous uh, uh, panel, I think uh, Alex Schalmeri said, uh, I mean, they're hotbeds of innovation. They must be, uh, because we want cities to be long-lived organisms. And actually, we, we need to go to transitions to ensure that, that you have a second, a third, a fourth lease of life. So uh, the wider perspective brings us that what we do here is important to our own cities, but even to civilization as large. I mean, uh, it, it reflects opinion. So another thing that comes to mind is that Benjamin Barber, who died a few years ago, but was a, a, a very interesting political scientist, wrote the book, uh, A Parliament of Mayors. He was of the opinion that we should not leave the world affairs to world leaders, but rather to mayors of major cities because they have a less, pol less polarized view on how to run a city. You know, you may have a different political opinion, but the buses should run and the sewage should work. So um, in this sense, I think also Rotterdam is a wonderful example of something that's going to a huge transition. We are a port city and an industrial city. We have huge problems on our hands with respect to the energy transition, uh, but also uh, enormous uh, opportunity there. And another thing is that in big cities, you have usually big social divides, and our program for inclusiveness is, of course, best practiced in this environment. So it fits us like a glove, but I hope that the things we do would have a much wider significance beyond our cities. Thank you, Ed. You already shared uh, uh, some of the challenges uh, Rotterdam City is facing. Um, now, I would like to ask uh, Alex from Bilbao to, uh, to answer uh, the first question. Good afternoon to, to all of you. I'm very, very happy to be here with all of you here. So uh, here in the city of Bilbao, what happened uh, 100 years ago was to, that um, luckily we found uh, high quality coal that permitted to, to have one of the two spots uh, uh, where the industrial revolution changed everything, socially, economically, politically. And that has uh, lasted for almost 100 years. But uh, obviously that uh, 20, 25 years ago, uh, many things changed here in Bilbao and we lost uh, uh, a large number of empl uh, employees. We lost many of our big uh, companies and we lost our identity because we were um, pretty well known all over the world for being an industrial city, for, for having built a society around a uh, coal industry. And that's, uh, that's was, uh, that was our problem, and that's part of what uh, the rector Pierre said at the very beginning, that um, uh, things are changing. And uh, probably that means that we need to see the future, uh, seeing what is happening in other parts of the world that uh, have suffered or are suffering the same situation. So for me, uh, answering your question, um, uh, a university like this one, an identity, like this one is needed because we need to, to, to benchmark what, what, is, what others are doing and what the city of Bilbao could do in the future. Because right now we do have more questions than answers. And that, uh, that means that we need to, to be all the time um, seeing others, making questions and making reflections. Thank you, uh, Alex. Uh, is there uh, is there anyone uh, of the panel who already wants to um, respond to the last answers of uh, Alex and Ed, maybe? 
If not, I would like to uh, ask the second question, although some of you partly answered it, but I'll uh, link it to what unique, uh, uh, how unique could, could contribute. Um, we would like to know what are the major challenges uh, your, your city is facing and how could, can unique uh, exactly contribute to addressing these challenges? Is there anyone who would like to start? I guess I could start since I started in the last round, but this should not be a habit for the whole uh, panel. So uh, challenges. Okay, I've, I talked a bit about the past. Now, you see, when you have a, a strong past in the city, it's important to go beyond that. And the challenge sometimes here is to say, well, we had our rather glorious past. We have to look at the future and sort of not so much relish the past, but really you know, construct the future. And we are doing this, and the university has been a very important actor in going through this transition, changing the type of industries we have. We had, as in Bilbao, coal mines, we had steel industry, now we have biotech, we have ICT. All this is growing, and we are helping to build this with the university. Now, what UNIC can bring to this is having this diversity of experiences going through the same type of transition and giving examples, each giving each of the partners are really giving examples to the other partners, sharing our experiences, seeing in what we have succeeded, where we have been less good, and learning from each other. And I think you know we talk about diversity in our cities, but having a diversity in our consortium, uni consortium, is also very important. You learn a lot by seeing how things go and how things are done in other places. And since there are some you know, similarities between our places, this can be even much more effective. So I think that's a major you know, contribution of UNIQUE is this sharing of similar experiences with a lot of variation between these experiences and then a lot to learn from each other. Uh, thank you, uh, Pierre. I saw that uh, Arto uh, raised his hand uh, when I asked who uh, wanted to start. So uh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I can go second, so we have the same order. <laughs> yeah, um, I would say that we, we have had some discussions from uh, with City of Oulu from the very beginning of the project, and not all of these topics are challenges as just, but we have we have four four topics we have discussed together. So uh, even though Oulu is an ICT city, one of the one of the topics or challenges for the city is the digital services of the city and how to co-develop these services together with the use, users, so us citizens. Uh, uh, second topic is uh, sustainable city and carbon neutral city. I guess that's a challenge for all of us. Uh, and the third one is the attraction of city, uh, how to attract talents, especially international talents, we, we are a bit far away from Central Europe, for example, uh, even though we have a lot of benefits in, in, in Finland, in Oulu. Uh, how to keep these talents in Oulu? That's, that's one, one thing. Uh, then um, the fourth one is the transformation of, of commerce and uh, and. Um, the chains of business due to, for example, digitalization, and this has an impact for livelihood of uh, of city center and the attraction of city center. So that's that's one of the things. And I I, I would say that the major tool, uh, what unique unique can bring to this equation is the city labs. So this is something we. We work already together, and and so working together, we can solve these problems. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I saw Alex raise his hand. I don't know whether it was to respond to. What's Just to in... to change the order a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just to introduce some mess, as Rector yes. said said before. <laughs> Um, no, just uh, to provide our experience from Bilbao, um, uh, from a little little story. Yesterday, I had a, a very interesting meeting with people coming from uh, some cities in Europe uh, because they are studying to uh, install in the city of Bilbao one of the high capacity computers uh, that um, uh, big technological companies deploy in around Europe. 
And the point there was that um, the, our main worry as one of the main stakeholders here in the Basque society is that we are not being able to retain our talent and we are not being able to attract talent. And that means that we are not being able to build our future society and that means that we are not being able to build our future economy. So we are starting to, to play different games, to, to, to attract different infrastructures and uh, investments. And for me, at least, the main challenge that we have as a city is uh, to define our uh, main obje objective for the coming 40, 50 years. And right, because right now we are just uh, uh, testing some different issues as the meeting that I had yesterday with that uh, high capacity computer. Is it going to provide us a real opportunity? We don't know. But that, that's our main challenge, to define really which, which is the, 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 the path. Because 100 years ago, we did have that path. And that, that meant that we were able to, to define our identity and our society. So for me, uh, Unique can provide to our city, um, probably City Labs, obviously, to, to, to build those um, problem-seeking students from the context, learning from the context but also to, to, to move our students around other realities where they are going to be able to, to study the problem really, really well and to, to, to provide solutions from the uh, practical experience, because that's also uh, one of our main challenges, to, to offer our students a real experience to, to learn. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Alex. And do you mean uh, with defining that path, uh, for for their city of Bilbao as a whole, or for the university, both of them, because here our context means uh, a real real close cooperation. Indeed, part of our uh, Basque identity is always explained as uh, our public private collaboration. You know that we are not a public university, so but we feel as if we were a public uh, university because we we did we do act as a public. Uh, actor and the institutions consider us as a uh, public actor. So um, when I mean from for Deusto, for the University of Deusto, I also sometimes mean for the city because we do have a, a real close collaboration. Okay. I, I will ask uh, the, the next question already. How could other universities contribute to what uh, the European University uh, uh, Unique is doing? Do you also see a role for uh, other universities in your cities? Uh, Ed. Yes, uh, very much so. And uh, I, I thought you would, enough chaos has now been inserted in the progress uh, in program because I still wanted to reflect a bit on the on the previous thing, but I'll do it in one fell swoop. If of you course, will. yes, you can combine them. Thank yeah, you. but it, so I, I think, of course, uh, our, our consortium is about uh, sharing best practices and experiences and comparing them. Um, and because it's coherent, I think this was Pierre's point. One could be perhaps even slightly more scientific. I mean, if we are alike, it would be interesting to see what solutions can be shared between our cities and which ones will not work everywhere and analyze why this is the case. I think perhaps two things that got a bit less of attention and I would like to add, although, you know, giving experience to students, but I see our consortium as a pump of talent and, and pump means uh, working in both ways. So not from one place to another, but all around the consortium, we would like to share talent among our students and our staff and make it work for all of us. I think this is, uh, this is an important point. Perhaps it was also meant by others. And least, uh, last, I, I would say something that I think my, my colleagues didn't mention, but being a representative of industrial cities in, in post-industrial cities in Europe, I mean, we are a lobby for our, uh, for our sort, so to speak among universities and, and, and in a European program. So I, I think we should also definitely have the ambition to influence the European agenda, both as regards universities and perhaps uh, policies that have an effect on post-industrial cities. So I'd like to mention that. Well, uh, going immediately to the second question. Yes, I think what everybody is saying more or less, I mean, we are central actors in our city. Uh, we are seen generally as an important driver of the transitions that are needed. This means we have meaningful interaction and this certainly means for my university, we have meaningful interactions with many other higher, high, higher education uh, 
institutes in the city. And I think this, this is quite important because if we want to interact meaningfully with the city, we also must interact meaningfully within the educational chain of the city. And I think one of the things we can also bring together is the experience that we have in this respect. Uh, so I see it as, as natural and important that we do it. And then of course, uh, some of the questions we are addressing may not be just limited to our kind of cities. So, so the same argument applies. Uh, we could look for interactions with other European university initiatives that are looking at similar things and also to see, you know, what is specific for us and what is things that we can share. So in this respect, learning from each other doesn't stop at the boundary of, of our uh, consortium. Thank you, Ed. And sorry for causing a, a no, bit no, more no. chaos. I, I like, I like, <laughs> I, 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 I do have, uh, let's say, sympathy to the remark that Ima made. Uh, so um, although uh, then I am almost prompted to say that I used to have a lot of interaction with Stanford University and there they always said, well, we're a special case. And what we value is the European consideration that, that education is regarded as a public good. And they said, that's very important. We don't have that. So that's the other half of the uh, coin, I would say. Yeah, thank you. Uh, who would like to respond to the question about how to work uh, or, or exchange with other universities in other cities? Okay. Um, shall I go to the next question? I'm, uh, I'm really curious to know, and I think uh, our audience too, uh, what you're all proud of in your own uh, in, a, in your own university cities, and I would like to start to uh, uh, I would like to start with Olu. You are renowned for your uh, innovation. Uh, what could uh, the unique consortium uh, learn from your uh, innovation experiences? Hey, thank you, Samira, and uh, I have I have two things. I I try to keep my answer short, but uh, please interrupt if I'm too, using too many words. Um, first of all, I would like to mention Oulu Innovation Alliance as one of the, one of the key things. And it was found, founded already 2009, and it was, uh, it was first public-private partnership action that I know, even though we didn't call it like that back then, it was called Triple Helix. Helix by us, and uh, this uh, Oulu Innovation Alliance for, has been from the very beginning building ecosystems uh, to boost collaboration in innovation and businesses on certain technology areas. And uh, two technology areas has survived from the very beginning. It's ICT that Oulu is famous for, and then health, and especially dig digital health. And uh, this spring, actually, we have uh, signed the, the new contract and we actually we expanded. So the, in the beginning, there were six of us and now we have three more parties. So we have nine all together, which uh, includes the city of Oulu, both universities in Oulu area. We have the hospital district uh, as, as part of the alliance. We have uh, two research organizations, uh, Technical Research Center of Finland and Natural Resources uh, Institute of Finland. And uh, we have also uh, vocational schools and so on. Uh, so we signed a new contract to continue the alliance until end of 2027. And for the first time ever, we have also funding from the Ministry of Economy and Employment in Finland all the way until to the end of 27. And uh, this alliance is also, let's say, slightly benchmarked by the by the. Uh, other areas in Finland. Few, few, few success factors, uh, if I if I may add here. Uh, of course, the commitment of the partners is a key for the success. We have an annual fee of twenty thousand euros for each of the partners, so it's not uh, too much money, but it gives a little bit commitment. Uh, I see it very important that city has been a facilitator 
in this uh, alliance from the very beginning. And also city has been quite generously uh, provided seed funding on, on these operations. And uh, it has been partly used for the management activities, but mainly for the innovation activities involved to this alliance. And, and the third cornerstone in this alliance is the active involvement of companies. And we have had uh, several uh, ecosystems. So some of them have already died. Some of them are already or, or, or still ongoing. And as, as an excellent example, I could mention one of these ecosystems is a Printocent ecosystem uh, dealing with the printed electronics, which uh, has been founded in the very beginning of the Innovation Alliance. It has annually around 40 companies involved, and out of these 40 companies, 30 is international companies, US, Europe, Asia, all over the world. And uh, they have a a biannual conference with uh, more than 250 attendees. They have a, a, a very big portfolio of projects running all the time with uh, between the universities, research organizations, and the companies. Uh, the second activity to bring to, to your attention, and I, what, I, what I would like to mention here, is more of an internal for the University of Oulu but uh, has a great impact on innovation collaboration with uh, various stakeholders, not only companies. So end of 2018, our board of directors at University of Oulu gave me a permission to start the operations of University Innovation Center. So beginning of 2019, the center started the operations and these operations are focusing on three things. First of all, company collaboration. There are long traditions. For example, our, our university is a radio university. We have been collaborating with, uni, uh, with Nokia ages from the from the first GSM and so on but uh, there's there's a lot of things to do so I was able to hire first key account managers to university which is a, a totally new model at least in Finland not fam- of course everyone who works at the companies know it very well what it means and uh, we we have done a process uh, description for the company collaboration which sets guidelines what to do and how to do. Uh, part of that is this uh, key account management uh, uh, model of work. And today we have in every faculty has a key account manager. In, okay. in faculty, and this, and this yeah. key account manager uh, um, uh, maintains the relationship with the companies. Yes, yes. Okay. So good. they they take care of the company if we can say it that yeah, way yeah yeah Sounds and they, they are also they are also uh, as acting as a one one stop shop for the company so the companies doesn't need to know only one phone number and name and then they take care of everything after that the second second focus in this innovation center is business development and again, I was able to hire the first ever business development managers to University of Oulu. And I mean real business develop- development managers who have experience of founding high-tech companies. Uh, at the moment, the headcount is 2.5 because one of the managers is still working in, in his company half-time. And their job is to commercialize the research results and innovation activities and of course there is a lot of lot of ways to do it and sometimes it goes all the way up to the spin-off company or founding of spin-off company and that's when the university's role stops so when they have when they have the tax number we are not anymore interested <laughs> Of, of helping them. We might be an owner, I have to say. And on the past 20 years, we, we have founded at University of Oulu 71 uh, high-tech companies, which I'm pretty proud of if you compare to the size of the city and size of the university. And the third thing for the, for the innovation center is the IPR activities. So all the IPR-related things, including the licensing agreements and so on, are part of the innovation center. 
And uh, this way at the University of Oulu, we have been able to bring some systematic, systematic city or systematic approach to the all kind of innovation activities. And we are actually seeing results already that, for example, even though we have been living the COVID, COVID pandemia last year, we were able to increase our industry collaboration. I'm very happy of that. We were able to increase the number of patents. We didn't see any decrease on founding on companies. And, and so I, I'm very happy. Uh, I, I, I will finish my, my one-man show here uh, just to I would like to ask all, all of the unique partners unique unique uh, universities if you have similar innovation structures at your cities or universities I, I would ask you to be in touch with me to share the experiences and share the best practices on these and have this as a one string on unique activities thank you Thank you very much, uh, Arto. It was uh, it was very uh, interesting and inspiring to hear uh, about how you connect and and actively work with uh, uh, with uh, yeah the world of enterprises and corporate life. Um, I would like uh, to ask the next question, which is actually directed to both Liège and uh, Bilbao. I'll start with. Uh, Dr. Volker, uh, uh, your university has close relations with the city already, from uh, from what I uh, from what we hear and know from our colleagues. What will the partnership uh, with the seven other universities and cities add to what you're already doing? Well, a close relationship with the city is, of course, important, and universities uh, thrive and cities thrive because they they cooperate and. If you, I, mean, I was listening very attentively to what we just said about the uh, Ulu and the innovation structure. We also have the similar innovation structure. I think yours in Ulu is more elaborate than what we have, but we are really active in this. And also in sort of taking the, the strengths of the city and its history and its traditional industries and bringing innovation to that. Because innovation, you always think, is something really new things. And sometimes it's just giving another look at older things that are still very valuable. So this is a different perspective, which I think we have developed and, and doing things that are very interesting going in this direction. Now, what the, the, the consortium, the consortium can bring, you know, furthermore, is to expand the ecosystem. Because we know that, that, you know, things work when you know people, when you can interact, when you can get services to develop something, when you can have partners. And having a, a much larger ecosystem and having possibility of, of exchanging, you know, people, ideas, uh, and, and uh, maybe doing uh, you know, collaborations and building projects together in all sorts of areas can be more than what we can do alone here. Now, of course, in, in, our, in our city, our university has many contacts, you know, with the UNIQ and outside of UNIQ, but I think our, you know, the specificity of UNIQ gives new opportunities. And I'm thinking just about you know, exchanging students, hiring faculty from one another. It's, it's a very positive thing. I mean, we had, you know, recently we just hired someone who had some experience in Cork and is now coming to Liège. And I'm not sure if, you know, Unique played a role in this person coming to Liège, but maybe. And uh, I think this is the type of thing where, you know, our concern is going to bring to the city a different diversity than what we have. And uh, this more different and pretty unusual diversity is going to be very interesting and is going to really, you know, build things. Just for the people we hired, you know, for, for this um, uh, <clears throat> project. I mean, we have Charlotte here in, in Liège and she had never lived in Liège before. And she came because of the unique project. And of course, this is a very small example, but I think a very uh, one that's, that really shows what can happen with a project like this. Thank you, uh, Pierre. And it's also uh, nice how you uh, emphasize also what uh, what benefits there are on micro level for individuals. Mm. Um, Alex, would you uh, like to answer this from a Bilbao perspective, this question? Yes, of course. Uh, thank you, Samira. Um, uh, first of all, re uh, regarding the first question of uh, what can we get from this collaboration, 
Mm, I usually um, use the example of uh, to compare this, let's call it sector compared to other ones. Universities traditionally, whenever they want to start up a project, they use their own resources, they use their own investment, they use their own whatever it is. <laughs> and we are not really used to, um, to share resources uh, between different uh, institutions or universities. For people that, um, uh, that we have been out of the university for some years, uh, that's something that is quite shocking at the starting, <laughs> that whenever we want to start up something, uh, we think on doing by ourselves. So for me, the main first step is that here, the, this university is going to be forced to share things and to uh, think on a learning experience built by different universities and realities. And that's, uh, for me, one of the main benefits, apart from some of the issues that my colleagues first said. The second point is, um, considering the question that uh, Rector Arto said before, um, here we, do, we did have a, a, an innovation center, um, and we are going to have another one, because we are going to change it. Something that we have learned is what the Professor uh, Christensen um, said many decades ago, innovation and production cannot live together. That's something quite complex, both uh, uh, not only by the same people, but also with the same resources, and but having different incentives. Innovation has a, a quite a different incentive and objective compared to the production ones. And that's why um, we are very close to uh, open a new innovation center out of the city of Bilbao. <laughs> and that's uh, quite paradoxical in this uh, forum where we are only speaking uh, uh, of our cities, but we are going to open a new one where we are only going to do activities that are different to the ones that we have in Bilbao. So, for example, lifelong learning courses, online bachelor degrees, master degrees, all those ones are going to be in a center that is going to be in the city of Madrid, in the capital city of Spain. So that's something that we are just testing again because we do need to do different things. And my third point is that... Um, uh, I usually uh, speak on having um, Deusto in 2050 as an extensible university. That's a concept that comes from uh, economics, and I love it. I am not an economist, so excuse me for using it. But I love that concept of having an institution that can be extensible quite easily, that it not only depends on our own resources, that we can share them with other close partners, and we can build together stacking different uh, pieces of the puzzle in order to build, uh, for example, a master degree. And that's something that we are quite close to get uh, within Unique. And that's something quite uh, interesting for us and is something quite um, quite uh, an opportunity for, for all of us uh, to build something new and something different in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. It sounds like you're not just redefining the city, but also redefining the university that serves the city. Very interesting, thank you. Yeah. Um, we have now around uh, 15 minutes left. I would like to, I haven't seen uh, any questions so far from attendees, but feel free to ask a question in the chat if you have any. Um, I'll make uh, some steps uh, and I would like to ask a, a specific question to all. And that's, um, that's going actually to, uh, the ones we're doing it for, and those are the citizens of the cities. Of course, probably most of us who work for the universities are also cities, citizens of the cities. But I would like to know from each one of you, how can we truly become a university uh, that includes uh, citizens and their organizations as equal partners? So really uh, work bottom up. Who uh, would like to start uh, for... Uh, to answer this question. Oh, I just uh, I just uh, heard from a colleague that I actually have one minute left. My apologies. Yeah, th this was the point I was making. We yeah, yeah. A break. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we need to uh, uh, finish a bit abruptly. Uh, but uh, thank you for uh, all that you shared. It was very inspiring and very interesting. And um, yeah, wish you uh, uh, a good uh, rest uh, of the day. Well, thank you very much. Thank for you. Thank you very much. Thank the debate and for conducting it very well. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.
Yes, thank you all. Thank you, Samira, uh, for the excellent uh, leadership. Thank you all for the uh, for the contributions. Uh, um, being together as universities and post-industrial cities is obviously at the heart of our identity uh, of uh, Unique. So it was very good to have an exchange on that and also set our ambition in terms of what we can contribute to post-industrial cities. Um,